Excellent. Uh, it is the top of the hour. So uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, good morning from uh, Seattle, Washington. Great to have you on the call. And as, uh, as I suspect, we'll get uh, additional people getting, getting on the call as we go forward. Uh, so this is the Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group. Uh, this is again uh, a special topic meeting uh, focused around the COVID-19 virus. And uh, we're going to probably be, hope, I'm hoping to wind down these special topic meetings probably in the next few weeks or so, uh, next month. Uh, and we're, we're trying to transition ourselves back into a, uh, what I would call a more regular cadence. Uh, but uh, the focus and the emphasis continues to be on COVID virus. There's so much work uh, going on in this space. Uh, and we continue to have quite a number of folks uh, really around the world in, in our global community who are really trying hard to find ways to help uh, facilitate solutions, uh, um, primarily technology solutions that, that have an impact on, on our global community. Uh, and they are, these are of course related in some way uh, to blockchain technologies. So uh, before we uh, get uh, too deep into it, as always, this is a recorded uh, open community, open source meeting. And uh, we do have a slide that I wanna present so that's on screen. Uh, please read through the details on that. The upshot is do, do not share anything that may be IP related uh, and generally be what I will always like to say, be a good person. Uh, and if you need to read anything more uh, details, uh, there's our antitrust policy identified uh, in the uh, URL there. Uh, as well, um, I always uh, am looking to, uh, to, to sort of welcome any new uh, members, first time folks that may be on the call. Uh, it's great to have you and uh, very much appreciate your engagement, your involvement, and uh, taking that sort of first step to get involved in the organization. Uh, anyone on the call this morning uh, who may be new, like to introduce themselves? Hello, I'm new. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Daji. I'll put uh, my video on. I'm Bashar Saab. I'm the CEO of Mobile Interactive. We're a digital therapeutics company. And we're super interested in having the, our, our customers and our patients um, have access over their data and where, where it goes. And so super interested in, in the special interest group here to see the directions headed for, for blockchain and healthcare. Excellent. And where are you guys located? We're distributed. Uh, our headquarters are in Singapore, but uh, we have people working all around the world. Excellent. And, and where, are you, where are you located physically? Oh, right now I'm in British Columbia. What, uh, Oh, a whereabouts in BC? It's called Salmon Arm. It's uh, about uh, halfway between Vancouver and Calgary, a little small town in the mountains. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, we, I'm from Seattle, so I am in BC often, uh, as okay. uh, probably about as far northeast as, uh, uh, well, Banff, Calgary. Uh, so, uh, and you're, and you're, you're coming through great. So it, it feels like you're next door. So <laughs> great to have you. <laughs> Well, I guess a virtual neighbor, so yeah, exactly. Uh, well, good to have you on the call, I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, really for anyone that's uh, new on the call, I'll, I'll direct your attention, we, have a, we keep a membership directory. Uh, once you get set up with a Linux uh, Foundation ID or what we call LFID, uh, this will give you the opportunity to come here and put your uh, name, contact information in. And really the, the importance of, of this is so that uh, you can sort of uh, keep, in, keep in touch with other uh, members of, the, of this group. Uh, this is a very small sample of, of total membership. Uh, total membership for this group is close to about a thousand members and that's at a global level. Uh, but uh, yeah, always great to find ways to, to use this uh, organization as a way to uh, sort of socially network uh, and engage with others with similar interests. So, uh, so welcome and great to have you. Uh, anyone else on the call want to introduce themselves? George uh, is talking. Yes, go ahead. Dan. Yes, I'm I, I'm new too. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I am I'm a CEO of uh, Yazis.tech. It's a healthcare company, and uh, I'm a uh, chief business development of MBA Mobi. There is a company that works for government here in Brazil. And there are some cases that I'm going to present to you. I'm based in Brasilia, uh, Brazil, the capital of the, the country. And I'm here to help and, and so on. 
Excellent. Yeah, and we'll we'll be hearing from you shortly. So thanks for for joining us on the call, particularly today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anyone else uh, new new to the uh, group, new to the call? Sure. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Jurescu. I'm uh, the president and CEO of a company called Terra Hub Technologies. We're based out of Calgary, Alberta, and uh, we're a private uh, blockchain tech company focused on uh, managing uh, worker. Uh, personal information. Excellent. Great. Uh, and, and say again the name of the company? TerraHub Technologies. TerraHub Technologies. Great. Uh, great to have you on the call. Uh, and uh, yeah, feel free to make use of the membership directory. Uh, and I'll also mention uh, for those of you that are new to the call, we do keep a, uh, a chat channel uh, and it's uh, really called uh, through Rocket Chat, but uh, the connection uh, you can grab here. Uh, Rocket.chat is very similar to Slack for those of you that are familiar with Slack and uh, it's a great opportunity to, to really sort of uh, talk in real time if, if there's a need to do so. Uh, so great to have you. Alrighty, anyone else on the call before we move on? Yeah, this is Jeff Stolman. I'm certainly not new to the group, but I'm kind of doing some different work that I thought it would be of interest, which is I'm focusing on the right to be forgotten and the ability to uh, I wouldn't say edit the blockchain because it can't, I don't believe in doing that, but being able to regain privacy, which may be particularly applicable for this uh, virus tracking. Yeah, yeah, well, good good to have you on the call again, Jeff. And yeah, that, mm -hmm. that aspect that you talk about is a big deal, uh, clearly because of GDPR and then some of the work that's happening here related to GDPR particularly in California and some other states here in the US. Uh, and that becomes a big issue going forward. Uh, and so, yeah, great great to have you sort of uh, focus on that. And, and good, to, good to hear from you, Jeff. Thanks. Alrighty, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, sort of move on. Uh, we're gonna do uh, a very brief pass on community announcements. Uh, normally what happens is uh, the way the structure of this uh, special interest group works is we have these general meetings, which right now are special topic meetings. And at the, at the, at the, at, in these general meetings, the intent is to really uh, showcase the work that's being done by uh, our three different subgroups. Uh, we're gonna forego that with the exception of the, the payer subgroup because they're, uh, they're doing some very special work on a pharmacy uh, uh, POC. And so, uh, let's see, is, uh, is Ravish on the call? Ravish, do you wanna do a, a kind yeah, of quick, quick update on what's going on with the, with the POC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, thank you very much, Rich, and, and um, thanks for the opportunity for a quick call out here. Uh, we are, um, you know, this, um, I lead the payer subgroup and we meet every other Friday, not the Friday when this, this meeting happens, but the other Friday around 1 p.m. Um, on, uh, on Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we uh, shortlisted a pharmacy management, fraud management use case that we are starting to, you know, uh, to really get into a, a, a POC build out. Um, I think the team has been, uh, has uh, was first deliberating on, you know, the use case. Uh, we have finalized the use case. And now we are getting into a kind of a development mode or POC build out mode. So I would encourage anyone who wants to join hands with us, uh, you can join next Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we are gonna be, uh, we are going to be covering uh, the use case at a high level um, in each of the, the uh, sessions just for initial five, 10 minutes. So everyone can get a, uh, anyone who joins new can still feel that they can quickly get up to speed. And all the information is available on, on, on the meeting, um, um, you know, meeting minutes with the use case uh, available there. So uh, just wanted to call that out. Yeah, and, and here's your wiki page. And so, uh, so sounds good. Uh, thanks very much for that, Ravish. Uh, and, uh, and best of luck on that. This is an exciting sort of new, uh, new work effort for, for you and the team. And so uh, really, uh, it really sounds very promising. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have anything that they'd like to, to make announcements to as they relate to uh, um, uh, blockchain technologies and healthcare? Oh, but this is uh, Jonathan. Just real quick, we had a very successful uh, hackathon for the Consensus Health that uh, just concluded, and we're in the midst of judging right now. He'll be announcing winners on Monday. 
Oh, excellent. Uh, we had yeah. uh, over 50 mentors sign up. So I think there was a few mentors who are on the call today. Thank you so much for helping out the teams. We had over 400, 500 participants and uh, ultimately 18 submissions. Oh, wow. Excellent. Uh, and uh, Jonathan, when, when the, uh, the sort of final Junju comes through, uh, it'd be great to maybe find uh, some time we can set aside and, and you, we can talk through uh, the winners and, and the implications and some of the work that they're doing. I think. Excellent. Thanks, Jonathan. Alrighty, well, let's move on to sort of the, the sort of special feature here. Uh, and again, this is a special to topic meeting for the HC SIG. Uh, and we're always very, very uh, interested in understanding how uh, others around the world have been sort of managing the, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, today, uh, we're, we're really happy to have uh, Diogenes uh, from Brazil uh, talk a little bit about some of the work that he and his team are doing uh, in, in Brazil. And, uh, and again, this, this really is intended to be really informational for those of us, particularly here in the U.S. We, we tend to be very myopic sometimes about how healthcare works outside of the U.S. And so it's always great to, to have an opportunity to sort of uh, get a much broader understanding of what's going on elsewhere. I know Dennis uh, from Switzerland talked, uh, Guillermo from uh, Mexico uh, had uh, opportunity to speak in the past. And so we're really getting kind of a very, very good sort of uh, global understanding of how uh, the COVID virus has manifested itself differently uh, in different countries and different cultures. And so I'm thrilled to have Diogenes uh, sort of step up and offer to speak and talk a little bit about Brazil. So. Diogenes, I'm going to hand over to you. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment, and then you should be able to pick up the share from there. Okay. And then go ahead and share your screen, and, and we're good to go. Can Excellent. I see my screen? Perfect. Yes. So uh, let me talk about... Uh, what have here in Brazil. Uh, I'm Diogenes. Uh, I'm kind of interested in healthcare uh, for about two or three years. We have a client here in Brazil that is the Minister of Health. And uh, in there, we have to do some solutions for the patients and for the particulars and so on. So it's a broader uh, scope of our solutions here in Brazil. Uh, the Minister of Health serves all the 27 states that we have here in Brazil. Um, and first to, to introduce, uh, let's talk about the new normal. Uh, we know that uh, we have a specially uh, challenging situation at the moment. And we have a new normal and that the transform it, the, 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 our future in our present. In the present that we know, uh, that we knew, now is past and we will never come back. We need to, to put it in our minds and to do something uh, on this. Uh, here in Brazil, we have a lot of challenges uh, with the pandemic uh, situation that we have for COVID-19. Uh, first, Brazil is a continental country. With federal states, we have 27 federal states, uh, 200 million population, and different conditions in its state. We have states like Sao Paulo that are very rich, comparable to Europe and United States. And we have states like uh, Acre, Rondonia, that are compared with Africa, very poor, uh, with no conditions. And we have uh, a lot of issues about that to handle it. I'm going to talk about some things uh, here about this problem that we have. COVID in Brazil, uh, at the moment, we have uh, 200,000 cases uh, and uh, we are rising. We are, we are not at the peak yet and we are rising. Um, at the moment, we have a very big problem on testing all the population. Uh, as you know, there is a big population and we have to test. There are some cities that are already in lockdown. Uh, some cities like Manaus, Fortaleza, uh, from, from the north and, and northeast in Brazil, they are already in lockdown. There are some studies about locking down Sao Paulo. Uh, 
it's our biggest uh, city here in Brazil. It's like not New York for you in the United States. And um, we have around uh, 13,000 uh, deaths at the moment. And uh, as I said, we are not at the peak yet. So it is a very challenging situation for us in Brazil at the moment. Uh, as we are thinking about this, this problem, maybe we can be the top three in about two weeks. We can be the top three uh, cases and deaths in the world. And we have some other issues, uh, like there is no more uh, physicians to, to work in the states that are uh, in lockdown and the states uh, that are problematic. Uh, we have uh, uh, fewer physicians per person that, than most development countries and fewer resources uh, like masks, like ventilators. Uh, they are not uh, very good in the states that are poorest. And uh, in the richest states, we have uh, some problems that we have some areas that are uh, very well equipped and some other areas that are not uh, equipped uh, and the, they have a lot of problems uh, with that, with the poorest. And our, ref, our health care facilities, uh, they don't use a lot electronic health records. Uh, for example, hospitals with more than 50 beds, uh, in, in general, the, there are 77% that use only paper. So uh, there is a very big difficulty on getting these informations uh, to, to uh, take some decisions that are needed and so on. Um, in Brazil, there are more than 5 billion records uh, in year, né, in a year and uh, more than 50k labs and 8k hospitals. And we have a, a very big problem with interoperability and silos. Uh, for this is that we have addressed blockchain as a solution for, to, to, to resolve these issues uh, on interoperability and so on. I have, uh, I have presented in Hyperledger Global Forum uh, this year, before pandemic, uh, it was on, on March 4, uh, what were, we are planning to do and what we were doing here, here in Brazil uh, about the interoperability and using blockchain. Uh, pandemic only have fastened our scenario to, to deploy all the, the states uh, when I talk it in the in the global forum, we are only planning to you to start with Alagoas, and then we are uh, we have here all the states uh, with us in the blockchain network, and we have a a very big problem here in Brazil. It's about uh, trustness. Uh, as we know, we have a a deep fake era. Uh, the, the post-truth era and uh, at the moment uh, there is a lot of misinformation here in Brazil about uh, what is uh, the, the COVID-19, uh, what are the treatments, uh, if we use some medicine or not, some drugs or not and uh, we have to address this as we work for the, the, the Minister of Health, we have to address this to the entire population. So, uh, fighting against COVID-19 here in Brazil, we have to use uh, three uh, approaches. One's, one of them is with the citizens, uh, with diagnosis and information. The other uh, is on testing population, notify and monitor cases and beds. And the other one is empowering practitioners. Uh, there's our three approaches that we are acting right now. The first approach on the, the citizens is the coronavirus SUS app. We have an app uh, and a chatbot that are 
uh, offered to the entire population. And this app, uh, as you know, uh, you, you can download on the, on the Google and Apple store. And it can handle the self-assessment of health status and then uh, give some directions to the population where what uh, the population can do or need to do uh, if they need to have a, a call from the, the pre clinical care they can address in the app to to make uh, to to uh, say that they want to have this call uh, we are doing right now uh, our voucher for the test. Uh, if somebody has contact with uh, another uh, person that has uh, been infected uh, by COVID-19, they can uh, have the test on the app. We are planning on doing uh, integration with Apple and Google and Google Exposure Notification API. At the moment, we are talking with. Apple and Google, and uh, uh, planning to do is this on the few weeks uh, will be in production uh, in the app. So for the population, uh, they have already the, the telesus approach. There is uh, we call uh, the population that are uh, on the on a condition that could not have a smartphone to address if they have the symptoms, if they are exposed and if they need uh, to, to be a, to be care about the, the health systems. Uh, as uh, here in Brazil, we have a, a public health system that is very big. Around uh, 150 million people is, uh, uh, have care about this public system and about 50 a uh, million people with private uh, sector. So uh, we have to address uh, a big population to the public system. And uh, we have a, a solution to notify the cases, uh, test and monitor uh, everybody. Uh, that is called NotificaSus. Uh, this, this solution, we have a uh, monitor of cases and beds and uh, approaches on whether uh, a health facility have a uh, full of beds or not, and we, if they need uh, resources or not, and this platform uh, address all the stuff uh, about the cases that are there, uh, the cases that are waiting for tests and so on. So this platform uh, goes beyond uh, the, the the cases and the and the and the the resources they monitor uh, all the stuff in health facilities. Uh, here in Brazil, we we have a, a test strategy that is on place at the moment. Uh, we have uh, fifty uh, thousand labs they are uh, doing testing and. And in this phase one, we have uh, already bought uh, 42 million tests for the population. Where at the moment we are adding the the solution to handle these uh, tokens, these vouchers for the population uh, in order for them to to be to be tested. And we have a solution for the the citizens called Connect SUS. The solution. Uh, shows for the for the patient the timeline uh, and the COVID uh, exam uh, result, the result of, of COVID-19 exams uh, in his timeline. And uh, with this information, we can send to our servers uh, if the, the, the patient has been infected and uh, with in contact with somebody that uh, could be infected, we can send it to, to be care uh, on the contact tracing uh, approach. That is we, we, what we are developing at the moment uh, in partnership with Apple and Google. Uh, we have a, 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 the patient summary. Uh, there is a summary for all the information of the, the, the problems 
previous problems that the, the patient could have, uh, the drugs that uh, he, 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 he had taken, and uh, last uh, encounters that he had on the, with the system, with some uh, physician and so on, and the last exams, allergies and so on. And so uh, uh, in this timeline uh, on our solutions, we are uh, doing use, uh, we are using uh, artificial intelligence to provide an intelligent part patient summary too. Uh, talking about blockchain, uh, in, in our strategy, uh, the, the timeline for the patients uh, are shared between the nodes uh, in, for the states and for the public sector too. Uh, all, all of this is uh, on cloud and uh, they are um, using Hyperledger Fabric. So in our strategy, uh, we are using um, as protocol fire uh, to to send informations and uh, using a fire server um, to put this this documents and the, this information on blockchain. So we have uh, some timeline assets, some patient side uh, assets, and some fire documents on a private data collection approach uh, on blockchain. And uh, we have an approach using data analytics with anonymized uh, patient information in order to have uh, uh, KPIs and solutions for the for uh, to to address some political uh, uh, solutions and decisions and so on. So we have an app for the patient. Uh, there is that can integrate. Uh, with wearables too, we have an app for the protectioner, and we have a, a integration with EHR and EMR software too. Uh, Jeff talked about GDPR at the first moment about the the right to be forgotten, and uh, here in Brazil, uh, we do not need to to address this this. A specific point of uh, the right to being forgotten, uh, because the the, the law uh, of the, the the healthcare system uh, is uh, wider and uh, uh, have a, uh, a biggest uh, force on the uh, on the on the law system than the GDPR. But we have to to consent. Uh, the access to the data, and we do this with smart contract and handle this with private data collection too. Uh, some numbers uh, that we have in production, we have uh, 2,000 uh, transactions per second on AWS cloud. The, it's prepared to use uh, Microsoft uh, Azure and uh, GCP too. Uh, we have already tested on, the, on these two and we, we are prepared to use on them. Uh, we're using Raft consensus with five nodes and two channels. We have uh, more than 230 uh, million patients on assets on blockchain. They are already there on our, on our structure. Uh, and we have two years uh, from now on timeline uh, stored on blockchain too. And we are preparing for 42 million tests. Some patterns and guidelines that we, we are using here, uh, as we are on a healthcare group, uh, you, you can uh, understand this on the, on the deeper uh, uh, situation. We have uh, some patterns like Snowmed, Daikon, Loink, and Fire as our structure to, to handle all the interoperability uh, stuff. Uh, on, on sending and receiving messages. Uh, and uh, we are using uh, REST JSON to, to send messages to our servers. Uh, as, we, as, as I talked, uh, FIRE is our standard for packaging message in Brazil. And we are using with FIRE uh, in our profile, 
uh, some objects like condition, encounter, procedure, observation, memorization, medication, dispense, composition. And um, we are plugging in with clinical documents from EHR or EMR, uh, from personal health data, uh, Apple Watch, Galaxy Watch, and Fitbit, uh, exams, diagnosis, images, and equipments, and uh, information from our apps from the patient and from the doctor. And all of this uh, is stored on our, on our network. Uh, we are using uh, some APIs to integrate. So uh, besides we are using Fire, we, we use we, uh, OpenR and CDA converters for, for the, the Fire message. And uh, we follow this, uh, we can change gears to what we are planning to do after the, pandem the pandemic. As, we, as I talked before, we are on a new normal and uh, we are need to be prepared for the new normal. Here are some scenes from China. And in China, they are uh, getting the, this new normal handled at the moment. Uh, but as we know, they are not uh, uh, democratic, so they can have some powers that on democratic uh, countries we don't have. So we need to address this uh, in a very careful way. First of all, uh, we are using uh, some, some things with blockchain and AI. Uh, to, to do the intelligent patient summary. We are getting those, those, those informations they are on blockchain and we are uh, uh, using them to, to, to give uh, a summary for, for uh, physicians, for, for the, the practitioners in order for them to have uh, some, some tips about what they need to do, like prognosis, like drug re recommendation, and so on. And in this patient summary, we are combining AI with the blockchain timeline. So we get this timeline uh, from fire. We change this on a graph, on a network graph. And uh, with this network graph, we are using uh, deep learning uh, in order to to learn how to handle this patient in a uh, very better way, and uh, uh, with these graphs, uh, with uh, AI, we can uh, use the timeline, the fire timeline, as a graph, and we are using the exposure notification API uh, for the contact tracing too. Uh, and we are rethinking healthcare. Uh, things like telemedicine, rapid tests, health data analytics, new approach on hostels, all of this should be handled uh, by our new solutions uh, on the future. And we, we need to others all of this. And in, in, our, in our company, we are uh, using these techniques in order to, to rethink healthcare. Uh, and we, one of the biggest concepts that we are using is the e-patient. The patient as the CEO of his, his own health uh, in order that the patient could have all this information, all the tips, all the, the stuff, and he can connect the dots and he can uh, uh, use the doctor as a, uh, like a manager for his health, like a... Uh, Something that somebody that can help uh, him to 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 do some decisions of his own life, and we are using some things like preventive medicine, uh, like health risk analysis through AI, enhanced timeline data with wearables, IoT, and so on. Uh, we have some POCs here in Brazil using uh, uh, the informations from the thermal screening to, to, to enhance our, our decisions on subways and, and places with a uh, lot of people uh, and how we can uh, connect the dots with this information with the timeline from the patient. And 
we are hoping to get on, with all of this with uh, longevity escape velocity. Maybe we uh, doing health maintenance using prognosis, prevention, health manager, and so on. We can uh, reach the longevity escape velocity and maybe uh, live for a thousand years and so on. Uh, in summary, we are using artificial intelligence, IoT, wearables, biotech, and genomics are on our plans to, to be integrated with the scenario using blockchain as our uh, main structure uh, to plug in all these technologies in our structure. Thank you for your time. I'm here for, for, for the questions and, and so on. Uh, if you need some information, please uh, contact me. I'm f here for help, and uh, I'm I'm in to 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 be an agent to to help people to be better, to live better, to live longer, and so on. Thank you very much. I'm handing to you, Rich, the the screen. Excellent. Uh, well, great job. And thank you so much for that. Uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, let's open it up for questions. So, uh, this is Anybody? Rish. Uh, just had one question. Uh, you talked about, uh, I mean, first of all, I mean, excellent presentation. I mean, this was really informative and really good. Thank you. Just one quick question I have is uh, you mentioned uh, you've been running this blockchain for two years or uh, I didn't get that. Uh, we have uh, two years of timeline for the patients stored on the blockchain. So uh, our project is not uh, this long, but we have uh, get those information from our, our legacy. Okay, uh, and, and we got that on the blockchain. And, and how long you have been uh, launched? Uh, we are in production for about uh, five months. Five months. And you said you are running on Fabric? Yep. Okay. Uh, we are using Fabric 1.4 and we 1. are planning to, to, to go on 2.0. Excellent. Uh, uh, Jonathan, go ahead. Oh, did question. you run into any issues migrating between different versions of Fire? So if, if for semantic interoperability between the models or the code sets? Uh, we are using Fire uh, R4 and uh, our profile are published on the, on, the, on the site. I can send it uh, to everybody here. And uh, we are using some profiles uh, from the R4, and, and, and they are adapted here to Brazil um, in, in some stuff. And we have some code consistence and, and some value sets, uh, like we are using Loink, uh, we are using some, some other international stuff uh, in order to have this consistency and these value sets uh, set. But I, but I can't send the, the, the whole information here that you can, you can uh, query uh, on, the, on the site and, uh, and all the profile is published there. I'm going to pick it and post on the, on the chat here. But no issues as far as migrating. You never actually used like version 3. It had to migrate to version 4 where I had to reconcile the link terms into because there's multiple different ways you actually represent each term terms mm -hmm. within fire. And so it depends on your code set. So some of the challenges mm -hmm. are actually is to um, reconcile to a common uh, identifier for those terms within the link or SNOMED CT, you are supposed to cr crosswalking between the, the different um, terminologies. Yeah. So it will have uh, some issues here, Jonathan, here in Brazil with, with this stuff. Uh, as you know, we, we, don't have a lot of time using these profiles at the moment, but as we are on a on an environment that is controlled by the government, uh, they they can enforce the the use and the patterns to to all the the 
the hostels and the laboratories and so on uh, using their pet their patterns all right so yeah, I got you. It, okay it, it, that must be nice <laughs> okay yes yeah the, yeah <laughs> much more easier <laughs> that uh, to to handle you just uh, publish a law and then everybody needs to use as as that. Gotcha. So it, it, <laughs> it must be that easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a great that's a great uh, question, Jonathan. And uh, boy, uh, here in the U.S., it, it does not work that way. <laughs> uh -huh. And we know that that they have some issues in order to to have this uh, done on on other countries. There is some cultural difference. Differentiation between uh, Brazil and some other countries, but uh, uh, we are trying to handle all the questions that came from the laboratories and from the hospitals and so on. But uh, there is some some things that could that uh, are easy here in Brazil, like this. Excellent. Uh, so I, I see a hand up uh, from Elena Dumas uh, Dumitrescu, but I don't think it was Elena, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, it's uh, Dan um, on, on behalf of Elena. Yeah, uh, the, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, uh, the question, actually Elena is the CTO. Um, so uh, the question that I had for you was, is this app uh, owned and operated by the, um, uh, by the Brazilian government or is this, um, or is this an, uh, an app that can be uh, taken somewhere else as well. Uh, let me ask, let me answer you with two ways. There is an app that is for the government, but we have a solution uh, in our uh, startup in our health tech that uh, is similar to the the solution from from the government and can be used in other countries in other uh, hostels and so on. Uh, is called yazis.tech uh, and it is in this uh, health tech that we are using uh, AI stuff and so on uh, in order to 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 get this the things done uh, there are some bureaucracies here in Brazil that uh, that uh, it helps in one way and it gets difficult in other ways uh, like mm -hmm. artificial intelligence uh, it's very difficult to address in the government at the moment. Uh, they, they have a lot of um, worries about the use of artificial intelligence. So, uh, but we, we can use this, this in our uh, private solutions and so on. And, but the government has uh, his particular app uh, for the entire population. And these things uh, talk with each other. That's really good, um, Rich. Do you think that we could um, you'd be able to connect? Um, you could you'd be able to connect us after the meeting. Uh, I would love to know a little bit more about this, as um, we've got a few other Latin American countries that um, might show some interest in something like this that we could help you push towards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, probably the easiest thing to do would be uh, to to contact me th through my email, which uh, you sh should have gotten through the invitation to this. Uh, yep. The other option is uh, you can just uh, put something out on chat and I'll pick it up on chat um, and we can make the connections that way as well. Uh, LinkedIn is always a great way to go too. So a couple different options, but absolutely. Good, good point, Dan. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. So uh, I'm going to, I'll hand over a question to Alicia, but before we get there, uh, just sort of a follow on question to that. Um, is, is any of this uh, open source, easy, you know, available uh, for, for us to sort of pick up and work with, or is this all, you know, really uh, through your uh, startup? The, there is some parts that are open source. The coronavirus app, uh, there is a, a first version that is uh, published at op as open source uh, for the, the community. Uh, I think uh, the people from the uh, B, uh, the the, the um, development bank, the, the international development bank, the here in Brazil is called BID. Uh, uh, they they have uh, do the, the the connections between the countries, and we send the 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 spark as open source. But there are some things that are at the moment not open source yet. Uh, as we are on a uh, funding uh, stuff, but I, we are planning to open source the blockchain stuff uh, and, and 
the the the, the private part will be the, the 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 connections with graphs and and artificial intelligence so on but at the moment uh, this part is not open source yet uh, as we have some NDAs to to use and and so on but uh it's planned to be open source in the future uh, good question and, and so uh maybe we can get uh diogenes we can get links to that and i'd be happy to publish those up here uh i'm, I'm guessing these are maybe out on github or, or equivalent yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna get it and and send it to all of you. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, and then I could I could also post it up on on the wiki uh, just for uh, for maintenance there too. Alicia, go ahead. Uh, this was just a quick question. Um, you mentioned that most of the records are paper re records, as well as what percentage of the population have access to phones smartphones and are you mm -hmm. actually concentrating on the big cities and the uh and the people that are have the the capability of having phones and electronic records and all of that which probably uh, are big cities okay alicia uh here in brazil we have a, around 75 percent of population that have smartphones and uh around the around 90, 90, 95, 96% of population that could reach the access uh, uh, of internet with these smartphones. Uh, so we are talking about um, maybe 50 million people that don't have a smartphone. Uh, there's a big number for, for us here in Brazil. Uh, but for this, we have some, some something like the telesus approach that uh, uh are handling to to call uh, some somebody that uh are on next to these people and and they can handle the, handle the phone to have the 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 answers and so on but uh, uh, uh here in brazil we have uh, a lot of health facilities too uh it's more than uh, 150,000 health facilities uh, that uh, the first attention uh, reach all over the country. And uh, if somebody don't have a, a smartphone, he can go to uh, to the, the, the first attention uh, facility and have the, those 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 answers too. Uh, but uh, the strategy at the moment uh, goes on smartphones uh, for the uh, the biggest part of the population thanks so so and another kind of maybe a, a, a follow-on question to that it you, you had mentioned uh, that that you're integrating or the plan is to integrate for contract tracing so is that has that happened is that due to happen what's what's the timeline for that uh, uh, the, the, the first part of presentation is already happening. They are on production at the moment. This, oh, good. Okay. Uh, I see. So, uh, all, all of this, we, uh, the, the coronavirus app, you can download from the store. It's on English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and, and you can go on there and, and see all the stuff. And the, the other solutions are uh, on production too in order that COVID-19 does not, does not wait and, and, and we need to, to handle all of this in a very fast way. Uh, we have to, to do some solutions uh, in one or two weeks uh, uh, for the, the, the criticity of the moment. And uh, we are uh, on, a, on a way on, on on getting the the maintenance done and on evolving all the solutions excellent good thank you uh indra oh hi can you hear me yes we can yes okay thank you um that was a good presentation my question is does your test strategy include immunization as and when becomes available i know the optimistic timeline for this 12 to 18 months away when somebody gets immunized vaccination 
um, so that at least to have a record of who got the vaccine. Um, so, you know, to either to back to work, um, to facilitate back to work, or even otherwise to kind of, you know, control and monitor the population in terms of who got in the United States. Does that include as well immunization? Uh, indeed, I sure. We, we, at the moment, already have those immunization parts on our app for the patients. Uh, so uh, all the immunization that they have uh, is on the air. Oh, okay. Uh, if, if he had or not. Uh, so if we need uh, in the future to have this immunization for COVID, uh, track it on the app you would be prepared at the moment. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I know there's a lot of work that's going on here in the US looking to, to understand uh, sort of best practices for, uh, for sort of validating uh, immunization and clearance. Uh, and so, yeah, they're, they're a, that, that seems to be sort of a, a, a very popular topic. Uh, any other questions? Well, excellent. Uh, thank you, Diogenes. A very, very, very good presentation uh, and uh, really uh, great to hear that Brazil is doing a, a, a really good job. Uh, it sounds like you guys are very prepared uh, and I, I really wish you the best, I, I, you know, as, as you sort of progress through the, the process uh, and, and as you're continuing to ramp uh, with the COVID virus, uh, at least, it, you know, some of that infrastructure uh, appears to be in place. And so uh, we got our fingers crossed for you. Uh, and again, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So in and, and the, and the remaining minutes, uh, what I'd like to do is just sort of walk through what we uh, more typically tend to do is, is understand a little bit about the resources that are out there uh, for the sake of the virus and for anyone that uh, is, is still actively sort of engaged uh, in uh, developing for the, the COVID virus. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, so up on the screen, you'll see that we have quite a number of resources that are out there. Uh, and I included a couple of uh, sort of highlighted uh, uh, healthcare related uh, uh, bits of information that relate directly to some of the work that's happening. Uh, this is just a highlight that I had uh, a colleague pass over. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to, to, to sort of uh, direct your attention to, which is fairly new, uh, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation uh, put together uh, two opportunities and these are uh, funding opportunities. Uh, for uh, really, it, it's sort of a, a big picture. It's not necessarily focused specifically on the virus, but you can sort of infer from that. But these uh, both came online, uh, and I could tell you uh, from personal experience, uh, this is a great organization to work with. Uh, and so these two opportunities have just come forward. Uh, and you could sort of, uh, again, like I said, guess that this is uh, related to uh, the COVID virus, uh, but it's, it's a bit broader in, uh, in sort of its approach uh, as well. And, and these, I think that these are all fairly limited to the US, um, uh, but there may be some exceptions to that, uh, and there may be uh, teaming opportunities that could be uh, uh, transnational. So it may be an opportunity there. Uh, as well, I, I keep uh, sort of a general maintenance of some of the larger uh, funding opportunities here. Uh, feel free to do a parse on those uh, in your free time. Uh, the, the intent there really is to, to drive uh, some collaboration within this organization, within this SIG particularly. So if you do see something of interest uh, and you're looking for resources, you know, make use of the healthcare SIG as an opportunity to connect. Uh, and again, we have that great membership directory to work with as well uh, as, you know, uh, we can use our email listserv to connect with about a thousand members uh, globally to work that issue as well. So any other questions or thoughts uh, as we sort of wrap up for the week? Well, excellent. So uh, our next meeting uh, will be again in two weeks. Uh, that's May 29th, uh, same time, which is seven o'clock Pacific time. Uh, again, thanks everyone for your support. Uh, really, uh, absolutely appreciate it. Uh, this has been a, a, certainly an interesting time. Uh, it's great to have your involvement in helping to drive uh, solutions as they relate to the COVID-19 virus uh, and helping to sort of helping us collectively to understand how this pandemic impacts uh, different members of, 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 of the of various communities around the world, uh, certainly the different cult countries that are involved. Uh, and again, thank you so much for your participation. Excellent. We will see you in two weeks. Uh,
take care, have a good weekend, and please be safe. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.